If there's a void in your life, it's not ultimately going to fulfill the place that God is going to have to fill. I wish somebody would get with me. I said drugs isn't going to fill the void. You know what? It's not going to fill me. Jesus is the only one. I've tried... I'll tell you what I have tried. I was addicted to some other stuff. I tried being in some relationships that I knew I shouldn't have been. And Jesus had to chase me down for months. Uh, it left me feeling hopeless. But when Jesus came in, he filled me with his spirit. You say, well, God's all powerful. If he's all powerful, can he get through anything? Uh, yes and no. Yeah, God's powerful. But will he, what he will not jump over is your free will. And what it takes is a choice I feel the Holy Ghost is a choice to wake up every day and say, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for God. I'm not going to let this world dictate what I believe and what I stand for because I love Jesus and I'm going to serve him every day of my life. Choose you this day who you will serve. It's a choice. I feel this so strongly in my spirit. The world continually deems those who are troubled, who are sick, who are afflicted as unfortunate, unlucky, missing out, in some strange way having damned themselves by labeling these things as the wrath of God or simply fate. But Jesus reversed this stigma in Matthew 5 and said, no, 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 those who have lost everything for my sake are the most fortunate members of society. So if you're poor and you're mourning, but you got Jesus, then you've got everything that you need. You don't need anything else. Because when I lost everything for him, I gained him and more. When I lost everything, I didn't really lose because he was my everything. Paul said, everything that I've lost, I've really gained because I gained him. Some people are afraid of losing. You're afraid to give things up because you're like, what would it, my life be like without this thing? I've been there at some point. I was attached to something for a long time. And when I finally gave that up, there's a, it's that void I'm talking about. That's what that void is. It goes, what's your life without this? Oh my God, I can't live without this. That's that void. But Jesus says, no, I'm going to fill that. And then I'm going to bless you even more. Isaiah chapter two, verses one through three, it says the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, and get this part, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out, get this, for out of Zion, shall go forth what the law the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem isaiah envisioned this glorious future where god would be enthroned and war would cease but let me tell you who preached on a mountain in jerusalem the apostle peter and you know what he said in the book of acts chapter 2 and verse 38 he said repent be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost I don't know who said it brother Steve if you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues today is your day if you have not repented of your sins today is your day and if you don't know what repentance is repentance is a 180 degree turn I'm going that way and I'm turning 180 degrees and I'm going the other way it's not a half turn it's not a, a 90 degree turn and I'm just kind of playing with it on the fence you know I can kind of keep this you know it's my little baby I love this thing. no 180 degree turn I'm gonna turn the other way and I'm going to repent